I'm an Army wife, and I'm a mother. I'm the proud wife of a United States Army infantryman and mother to two beautiful Army daughters. My husband, Michael, has been in the Army for 22 years, and I've been with him for 14 of those years. He's currently serving his dream assignment, working with the 3rd Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, here at Fort Myer, and we have been calling Washington, D.C. area home for the last four months. I want you to meet my daughter, Michaela. Michaela is 13 years old, and she is an amazing child. Michaela was born in 1997, a different army. Her dad was allowed to come out of the field to meet his new baby. Today, Michaela's life is all about her new friends, Starbucks, Facebook, the 24-hour news cycle, and war. But it's not a war she sees through the television. It's a war that lives and breathes with her every day. It goes to school with her. It sits next to her at the dinner table. And she lives in the shadow of it. Her dad and I often worry and wonder, as most parents do, what the future holds for Michaela. Where will we be as a family when she graduates from high school, from college? Will she get married? And would she marry a soldier? Now, if her dad has anything to do with it, Michaela is never going to get married. <laughs> she is going to live with us forever. He's attempting to have that rule changed that your children have to stay with you forever. And if she does get married, she will never, ever marry a soldier. Now, I know I can't predict and I can't stop who my daughter falls in love with. But if she does marry a soldier or any man in uniform, I want her to know what she's getting into. And so I will, I'm going to share with you today a letter that I've written to my daughter in the event that she is swept off her feet by a soldier, just as I was swept off of my feet. And what I'm sharing with her is information that has been shared with warrior families for centuries, that there are things in this life worth fighting for. And she will be called upon to sacrifice for that duty, just as all military families are. She will serve quietly and compassionately she will find strength she never knew she had, and she will lean on her army family. Dear Michaela, if you are reading this letter, it means that you have decided to become an army wife. And as much as I would like to tell you it is a life full of pride and patriotism, which it is, I feel I have an obligation to tell you about the hardships and realities that also come with this life. I always thought we were a normal Army family. But as I look back on our journey and the twists and turns and detours our family went on, I realize we were far from normal. And you thrived in spite of it all. And maybe it's because it's all you ever knew. You were born into this life. You didn't choose it. Or maybe it's because you love this life just as I do, and maybe that is why you've decided to marry a soldier. Your dad first went to war when you were five years old, and I remember picking you up. You were in your Disney princess pajamas and packing you into our minivan as we drove to your dad's company. We drove him there so he could drop his bags and draw his weapon. And you walked with him. You were wearing his Kevlar, balancing it on your head. And you were clutching his hand, grasping at every moment that you knew you had left with him. And we went to the building where other families were saying goodbye to their soldiers. And they were crying. And I looked at you, and you weren't crying. And when it was time for you to say goodbye, you gave your dad his helmet, you hugged him around the neck, and you kissed him, 
and you said, see you soon. And your dad turned, and he walked away. And your dad did not look back. And this was heartbreaking for me. And it wasn't until many years later that your dad confided in me the reason he didn't look back was because he did not want to acknowledge the possibility of that moment being our last together as a family. And I was worried about you too, Michaela, because there you were, this strong, stoic five-year-old staring bravely into the night with no emotion. And I thought you didn't understand. You couldn't understand. You were only five years old. But you did understand. You were being brave for your dad. You did not want him to see you afraid. Michaela, as an Army wife, there will be times when you don't want to let go and that you feel like you can't be brave. But you will be. You will be strong. You don't have a choice. You will cling to your Army family when you feel like you can't go on. And you will be a shoulder for them to lean on as well. Your Army family will become one of your most treasured possessions. When we got back into the car after dropping your dad and watching him walk off to war, you collapsed in the front seat of the car, sobbing. You were inconsolable, and you cried that entire night. You slept with me, and you slept with me for many nights after that. All I wanted to do during that time was sleep. And when I would wake up, I remember staring at a spot on the wall across from our bed. And I thought if I stared at that wall long enough and hard enough, that all of my fears, everything I was afraid of, would all disappear. And I let my mind go into some very dark places. I planned how I would react. Two men in uniform came and knocked on our door. What I would say, how I would feel the moment I found out that your dad was not coming home. I even went as far as to plan what I would wear to the funeral. And then I would think of you and your beautiful smiling face. And you needed me. And I realized that I needed to be strong. I didn't need to be strong for you, Michaela. I needed to be strong for me. And it was, acknowledge it was acknowledging those fears and recognizing them that made me stronger. And my Army family helped me see that. They helped me realize that saying that I was afraid was the bravest thing that I could do. Your dad was injured in 2003. He suffered a blast concussion and what doctors called a subdural hematoma. Basically, he was bleeding in his brain. Your dad, being the soldier that he is, thought he just had a bump on the head and a few residual headaches, but it wasn't that simple. And he was eventually medevaced out of Iraq and to a Kuwaiti hospital. And then they sent him home. And there was nothing I could do, and I felt helpless. When he did come home, our days were filled with doctors, medications, and headaches. And you, being daddy's little girl, would draw him pictures, write him letters, telling him how much you loved him. You would hug him and kiss him, and you were being brave for him. In 2005, your dad's unit went back to Iraq, but the doctor said your dad could not go. 
and he was upset because he had to watch his brothers go back to the fight. And during that deployment, your dad lost many friends. And we would go to the memorial services together. And I would cry. And I would hold his hand as he cried. And I would ache and feel such sorrow. I would feel that for the widow and the family who had given so much. But I was also very thankful that it wasn't me. And then I would feel guilty. And your dad felt guilty because here he was home when his brothers were leading the fight in Iraq and he could not be with them. Michaela, as an Army wife, sometimes you just won't understand. You won't understand why the Army does what it does. And you won't understand why your husband does what he does. But it's just the way it is. It's the Army. We have thankfully grown beyond the age of if the Army had wanted you to have a wife, they would have issued you one. Very thankful we've grown beyond that. But there are many times that the brotherhood your husband belongs to won't take into consideration that he has a wife, that he has a family, that he may miss another Christmas, another anniversary, another birthday. And you're going to want to fight and scream and protest, but you won't. Because the pride you feel in your husband will dull that pain. When you were younger, you used to ask me, how many more birthdays is daddy going to miss? And all I could say was, I don't know, because I don't know. But we clung to our Army family during that time to fill that absence. And I had cast my lot with a soldier, just as you are casting your lot with a soldier. And where he is, is home. But where your army family is, is also home. In 2007, your dad was given the all clear. The doctor said he was well. And it was a, a beautiful day for us. But it was also very bittersweet for me, because I knew him being well meant that the army could deploy him again. And I was certain that the time we had together was short. The unit your dad was assigned to at that time did not release him to deploy. And so once again, he watched as his brothers marched off to war, and he was left at home. I was relieved because he was able to be home. He was very angry. And this was a hard time for our family. I said, you've nearly given your life for this country one time. Please be OK with just being home with us. And I wanted so desperately to ask him, do you love your army? Do you love this country more than you love me? But I didn't even need to ask the question. The answer was easy. It is because of this answer that I love your dad as much as I do. It is why I understand that when his nation calls, he will go and fight. He will fight for us. He will fight for this country. And Michaela, I want to share with you a letter that your dad wrote to us just five days prior to the invasion in 2003 about why he chose to fight. I'm scared of fighting, not of the actual fighting itself, but of the potential of not being able to share any more days with you. But it's because of you and the kids is why I must fight in order to do so. I want you to be proud of me, and being part of this allows me to give you all something even greater, a more secure world to grow old in. If I have to give my life for that, 
than I will. You see, Michaela, he was fighting for us, and he drew his strength from us. In 2009, your dad was able to deploy, but this time it was on our terms, and I was ready. And we drove your dad to his unit so he could drop his bags and draw his weapon. And when it was time to say goodbye, you hugged your dad around his neck, you kissed him, and you said, see you soon. And he turned, and he walked away. And you stood there, 12 years old, stoic, staring bravely into the night, once again being brave for your dad. Michaela, loving a soldier is never easy. But there are things, in, but things worth having in this life are never easy. By marrying a soldier, we'll need to understand that his job, his mission, and his duty to country will always come first. But accepting that, I hope that you will learn to love this life as much as I do. I wouldn't trade it for the world, not a moment. And so, when I'm not there to pick you up when you fall and to dry your tears when it hurts and to cheer you on when you don't think you can go any further, your Army family will be. All my love, Mom.